There is perhaps no greater honor a horror filmmaker can receive than to hear that their film made audiences ill. Here are some horror movies that made audiences physically sick in theaters. Macabre was director William Castle's 40th feature film, but really it was his first, at least as an independent creative. Castle, who previously made movies for Columbia and other studios, began branching out into horror movies in the late 1950s, after a long career of studio-mandated westerns and other genre cheapies. By that point in his career, Castle, always interested in gore and horror, understood that in order to sell a movie to a young, hungry audience, one must have an angle, a gimmick, if you will. Castle, tapping into a very general paranoia about extreme horror films killing their audience members, openly proclaimed in the advertising for Macabre that there was a very real possibility you may die of fright. Bring someone with you to see this motion picture. You'll want some live hands to hold during the performance. If true, this would have been a headache from an insurance standpoint, so Castle acted accordingly. Upon arrival at the theater, audience members were handed a certificate for a life insurance policy, backed by Lloyd's of London, that would award the viewer $1,000, which is equivalent to about $9,700 in 2022, should they die of fright in the theater. Additionally, Castle hired actors to dress as nurses and remain on standby in theater lobbies to check the vitals of anyone who might be close to death due to Macabre's intense scenes. Macabre, by the way, is merely a fun potboiler that features a kidnapped child and someone being sealed inside a coffin alive. While possessed of an EC Comics-like wickedness, there is nothing so horrifying as to scare you to death. Nonetheless, and one can posit that this was to attract the attention of the pretty actresses hired to play the nurses, there are a few stories of young men fainting in the theater because Macabre was just that scary. Regardless, the gimmick was a hit, Macabre made millions, and Castle made several of the best horror movies of all time with even more elaborate gimmicks in the future. The Exorcist is often called the scariest film of all time. And, until 2017, with the release of It Chapter 1, the highest-grossing horror film in history. That said, William Friedkin's horror masterpiece has no shortage of legends associated with its reputation. Not only are the film's curses part of public record, and were even covered in the debut episode of Shudder's Cursed Films documentary series, but audience reaction to The Exorcist was intense and dramatic. Stories persist to this day that certain moments in The Exorcist cause audience members to faint. Did you do that? Uh... The most notorious scene, and the one that has the legends attached to it, involves the 12-year-old Reagan McNeil doing something immensely horrible with a crucifix. This is a scene that was also featured in the William Peter Blatty novel upon which the film was based. It was this scene that allegedly inspired the legendary fits of unconsciousness. Add to that scene any number of horrifying images, such as projectile vomit, heads turning backward, or levitation, and you have a shockingly scary movie that has truly stood the test of time. Notoriously walked out on at the Cannes Film Festival, and often considered one of the most disturbing feature films ever made, Gaspar Noé's Irreversible set out to make audiences sick. With a message of time destroys everything and told in reverse scene order, Irreversible is one of the most aggressive and perhaps one of the more pessimistic movies ever made. It also contains a notorious sexual assault scene wherein Monica Bellucci, who directed the scene herself, is attacked in an underground passage. It's incredibly difficult to watch no matter how desensitized you are. Not at all content to merely shock audiences with an extended scene of extreme sexual violence, Noé also used an experimental sound technique during the film's early scenes employing ultra-low-frequency bass notes that had previously been developed as a non-lethal weapon intended for use on the battlefields of World War II. Certain low sounds have been known to induce nausea, and Noé wanted his audience to feel that nausea. Add to that a severe beating in a club, loud music, and flashing strobe effects, then you have a vomiting audience just waiting to happen. Mercifully, the film's violence is relegated to its first half, and the falling action lets audiences recover. Nonetheless, the horror of the opening scenes lingered with audiences and left many feeling physically ill, leading some to flee the theater, struck by fits of queasiness. 
However, if the goal of the film was to leave people feeling ill, then Irreversible was a rousing success. Hungarian filmmaker Gyurgi Palfi's 2006 film, Taxidermia, is a difficult one to stomach. Presented in vignettes, the film follows several generations of men as they face the darkest appetites of their bodies. This involves trauma to sensitive areas, violating a pig corpse, a great deal of overeating, and a climax wherein a character uses an elaborate machine to remove their own internal organs. Partly a meditation on the nature of our relationships to our physical forms, and partly a grand guignol horror oddity, no one will leave taxidermia without several disturbing images burned into their brains. Come on, let's go! Why am I doing this? Just run! There are plenty of dark and gross moments to choose from, so it's difficult to say which moment in particular inspired the most vomiting. But vomit, audience members did. Anecdotally, as someone who worked in a movie theater where taxidermia played in 2006, audiences had to step out during the competitive eating scenes, wherein two of the main characters hastily shove large quantities of gelatinous meat-like substances into their mouths. The film also experienced walkouts during the final self-taxidermy scenes, as there are numerous close-ups of actual pulsating organs. It's unclear how Palfi achieved these effects. It's safe to say we've heard more dry heaves during taxidermia than in any other movie, unless you count those we suffered during the latest Space Jam film. Lars von Trier's 2009 film Antichrist is the first part of what has come to be called the Depression Trilogy, which also includes 2011's Melancholia and 2013's Nymphomaniac. All three films delve into the intimate details of the depressed mind exploring the unusual connections our brains manifest when soaked in sadness and mourning. In this, sex and death become interlinked. The natural world becomes dank and forbidding. Chaos reigns. Our relationships to others become hateful and suspect. The invading force of depression often lies, convincing you that you have no self-worth. Lars von Trier struggled with severe suicidal depression for many years and he was uncompromising when he put his own emotional state on camera in Antichrist, using actress Charlotte Gainsbourg as his mouthpiece and Willem Dafoe as the obnoxious male who insists on analyzing away something that is too overwhelming to ever be analyzed. Antichrist is about a wife and a husband who recently lost their young child to an unfortunate accident while they were making love in the shower. The sadness and mourning following the event leads to a retreat to a remote cabin in the woods, as scary and foreboding as anything from an Evil Dead movie, to heal. Needless to say, they do not heal. Madness begins to infect them both, and the film climaxes with Gainsbourg attacking Defoe, inflicting some horrid genital trauma and screwing a lodestone through his leg. We here at Slash Film can personally attest to the film's nauseating effects, as not only did the movie make some of us feel ill the first time we saw it, but we also witnessed moviegoers leave the theater in visible disgust during its more gruesome scenes. It will take a strong constitution to see Antichrist, but the film will reward you with an accurate portrait of what it feels like to be depressed, something that not all people have the ability to understand. When it debuted at the Toronto International Film Festival, Julia Ducourneau's Raw inspired calls to the paramedics. Reports from the venue said that several audience members had passed out during the screening. Given the film's cannibalistic subject matter, it's easy to see why. Raw, true to its title, features a lot of chewing on uncooked meats and, in several notable sequences, human meat that's still alive. Additionally, there is a scene in Raw where a real horse is actually anesthetized on camera, which only added to the fleshy authenticity of the film. Don't worry though, there's no need to make an urgent phone call to your local PETA representative. The horse was okay. Ducourneau, with Raw and her latest film, Titan, appears to have an emerging thesis in her body of work about our human flesh prisons and our slavery to them. We are our bodies, and our appetites rule us. That the cannibalism in Raw was presented so frankly may have a lot to do with the reaction it got at TIFF. This is no wicked game or exploitation movie. This is a movie that confronts audiences in grotesque but meaningful ways, and it's to DeCorno's credit that she was so effectively able to get under everyone's skin. While the above films made people sick, 
The 2018 Canadian mockumentary Antrim, the deadliest film ever made, is the only one that claims it will kill you right in the title. Perhaps taking inspiration from John Carpenter's films In the Mouth of Madness and his Masters of Horror episode Cigarette Burns, both of which featured fictional films that caused viewers to go mad, Antrim is a movie about a fictional movie that has a 100% fatality rate among its viewers. Staged in BBC documentary style, it involves a lot of convincing period detail as it unfolds the style of a mad European filmmaker in the 1970s, whose film was infected with a curse. Think The Ring via Cannibal Holocaust. A disclaimer at the head of the film declares, Antrim is not safe. One by one we pray to thee, protect us from all we'll see. As far as we've been able to discern, no viewers of Antrim have actually died after watching it. However, any claim that a film is so scary it might kill us is certainly going to attract our attention. After all, what better way for a cinephile to go out than to be killed by a film? That being said, we implore you to make some popcorn and watch the film that's built around the ultimate horror movie promise.